Welcome to the Harnessing Happiness podcast. This is the Happy Clappy Soundbite. Hello and welcome to Harnessing Happiness with myself, Sarah J. Naylor. Thank you so much for dropping on by and taking time to listen to my podcast. I, I really do appreciate it. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Park Run. Now, Park Run is something that makes me really happy and I love embracing my local park run and to be fair park runs that are now further afield of which they are all over the UK. So what is the park run? For those of you who are uninitiated it is a weekly run on a Saturday morning at nine o'clock and it is 5k in length. For those that still prefer it in old money it's uh, it's just over three miles and it's just brilliant. It really does kickstart your weekend. And I've been known to turn up in all nature of weathers. <laughs> really, yeah. um, not so good when it is cold and wet, though, because I wear glasses and they do tend to steam up. Back to the very nature of the park run. It's a run or walk. You can I say you can run it, you can walk it, you can run it with a dog, you can go with children um well push chairs if they're young children or you can run with a child you know a child i said dogs always have to be on a leash but a caveat there not all park runs um allow you to take a dog i don't really know the ins and outs of that um and then people can actually walk it as well the park runs are all over the country they're global uh, i don't know how far spread they are these days but um i know it is and has become a very much of a global thing too the beauty of it is, as I say, it, you, you get out there, you're in this community, you're with like-minded people who want to go out you know, and get some fresh air, want to do something on a Saturday to kickstart their weekend. Because there's this real sense of achievement of having gone out there and, and run or walked or whatever it is and however you want to do it. Um, you can't bike ride it, obviously, and you can't do it on a motocross motorbike. However, it is, you know, it's all to be on foot. <laughs> unless you were lucky enough to be pushed around um, in a push chair. And there's been many a time I've got oh, room for another one on the back of that push chair, but it's always been declined. But the beauty of it all is that, you know, you can turn up in all sorts of weathers. And there's people that organ there's the organisers, the race directors, the volunteers, the marshals. And that's something that I know on a personal level I need to do more of. And that is some volunteering. Uh, I've done it once, which isn't enough. Uh, I have helped out previously, but not sort of had a sort of a nod and a badge for uh, doing the volunteering. But um, I would like to go back and do more. And I will do because without the marshals, the volunteers, the people that take time out of their weekend to actually make sure that it is organised and it goes ahead, it, it wouldn't go ahead. And as I say, it is. It's brilliant. I mean, there can be some park runs that only have sort of 40 or 50 people and others that can have in excess of six, 700. My local park run is um, Rushcliffe and that's in Nottinghamshire and there's regularly several hundred running there. It's usually, I suppose, at the moment around the sort of 300 mark, I'd say. But I've been there before when there's been about 700 people. Oh, that's a lot of people running around a country park. <laughs> But it's, as I say, it's great fun. And going back to those of you who aren't, who are uninitiated, you you have a code. You you register for the park run, and you turn up probably about ten minutes before it starts at nine o'clock to get there. I mean, a lot of people get there earlier, and they'll do proper warm ups. They might even do one lap of the course, or maybe two. Some people actually run to the park run. Others, like myself, take the car. <laughs> Once the klaxon goes at nine o'clock or thereafter. You do your, for, well for us, it's at Rushcliffe, it's at two laps of the course. Um, some courses it's three laps, depending on how big the site is. And some, I've done Holcombe Hall in Norfolk, and that was just one lap. I actually quite like the one lap, because actually you just keep going, and then when you finished, you finished, rather than going past where you're going to finish, but <laughs> you've got to go round again, you go, oh my gosh. And I've done Colby Park Run, and uh, where was the other one? Oh, Hunstanton Park Run as well. And then they're three laps, and you go, oh my gosh, you've got another one to go. <laughs> when will it finish? When will it finish? And that sounds like I don't enjoy it. I do enjoy it, I love it. And I kind of go at my own pace. And 
uh, my average time is about at the moment somewhere between 34 and 35 minutes whereas my partner Gareth um, whizzes through at about sort of 22 minutes so it's you know, it's for everyone really uh, you know my local say part run which is um, Rushcliffe uh, there are <laughs> there are those that uh, are finishing as I'm just starting my second lap. A tad disconcerting, but my gosh, can't they run? They whiz by and they're doing it in about sort of 15, 16 or 17 minutes. So that's uh, two laps. That's what to say 5k in that time. It's just it's just so fast. But you know, it, it's not about finishing first or the fastest. Or, you know, it is for them, obviously, but for me, it's about turning up. It's about taking part. You have a barcode. So when you register, you get given a barcode. And then when you finish uh, running and you go through the funnel as you come to the end of the part run, you get given a token. And then you go to the people that are scanning your barcode and your token. And then what happens is you get a report, uh, I don't know, two or three hours later, depending on obviously how many people there are and how quickly they've actually coded up all the uh, tokens and got them uploaded onto all the tech that then generates the emails out to everybody that's run. And it tells you how, you know, which number part run it was that you did, where you ran, where you finished your age graded category and where, you know, where you finished in the grand scheme of things. And so there are so many different levels of achievement when you do the part run. And that's one of the things I love about it, because I will never be the one <laughs> unless I do something dramatic, which I don't have the time or the inclination for, to be the fastest one through the gates. That will never be me. But, you know, I know that, you know, every time I go, I've clocked up another part run. And that's my sense of achievement. I also like going to different locations. And the people that do go to other locations and other part runs are known as tourists. And what is brilliant about that is you, you, you've got a reason to go somewhere. And I know of people that actually have weekends away based on where the park run is. So they might think, well, where, where do we want to go or what can we do? And people will actually go to a location so that they can pull in the park run but have a weekend away at the same time. And then there are people that do the alphabet of park runs. So you start with, you know, A and work your way through Z. Whether there is part run for every letter of the alphabet now I don't know I seem to be clocking up ones beginning with H and um, C so I've done Clifton Park Run and I've done Colby Park Run I've done Holcomb Park Run and Hunstanton Park Run and I've done Rushcliffe and Melton Mowbray oh I've done the uh, the Gunpowder Park Run as well that's down in London when I went to visit a friend there's so much enjoyment from it there's people I've met and friends I've made from going to the park run and then there's a small group of us locally that are um, sort of Rushcliffe, um, I can't remember what they've called the title of the group now, but Rushcliffe Rovers, that's it, Rushcliffe Rovers. So we're going to different um, park runs and um, that's great. So you meet up with friends that you know, uh, and different people have different ideas, they'll organise different trips to different park runs. So as I say, so much enjoyment to be had. And uh, it was great getting my 50th park run t-shirt, although... Thanks to the joys of COVID, I had to wait 18 months for it. I had done my 49th park run and I had to wait <laughs> for park run to start up again once um, obviously all the restrictions are lifted before I could hit my 50th and get my T-shirt, which I've done, which is great. So uh, the next milestone, of course, is 100 and to start doing more volunteering as well because you can get T-shirts and nods and acknowledgement for all the volunteering work you do as well. So... I say so many ways to enjoy life with going out to your park run, whether you're volunteering, you're supporting the people that are doing it, you are supporting friends that are doing it and family that are doing it, you're running, you're walking, you're taking your children, you're taking your dogs, you're taking kids in push chairs. It's just a great, it's a great morning, great way to start the day. And I say you're getting some fresh air, you're getting some exercise. It's usually in a fabulous location because there's clues in the title, park run. <laughs> uh, so if you haven't already been to one, do do try one. Pop along, enjoy it, you know, and just get involved. Anyway, I've been rambling on for long enough. So uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. If you've liked this episode, please do rate, review, follow, subscribe, whatever it takes, because I'm aiming to spread happiness globally um, and I'd love to hear from you as well let me know where you do your part run and uh, drop me a note 
to uh, hello at sarahjnaylor.com, which is how you can reach me. As for now, over and out. Until next time, I look forward to hearing from you. Take care. That was the Happy Clappy Soundbite. Hear full-length episodes of the Harnessing Happiness podcast, released every Tuesday. And for more exclusive content from Sarah, just visit sarahjnaylor.com.